under your viewport, you have the, the timeline, of course. Here I have a ROM animation. So you can scrub through the timeline. You can middle mass button to directly jump the time control, the, the slider at a certain frame. Just like any animation software, you can change the, the frame range. You can go minus and you, you have this slider inside the main uh, time range. You have your time code here frame you can play back stop play backward jump to the next key so the shortcuts for the playbacks are control space to play and stop uh, if you want to go frame by frame it's control and uh, the arrow keys so left and right if you want to play backward you can press uh, control down or control up to play forward and then to jump from from key to key, it's um, semicolon, comma. And here you have the option to loop your animation. You can change the playback speed. And you have your frame rate, of course. And on the right, you have some very interesting options. Um, you have uh, snap and play on frames, play on frames, snap on frames, or no snap. Uh, this is how the like the time cursor snaps on the timeline. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you see what's, what happens. So you can see that when I do no snap, I can actually drag my cursor in between frames and see the time code here. You have the, the in between frames. So if you want to see some detail uh, and, and see how something is interpolated uh, between two frames, this is very useful. And no snap also means that when I play back, I play back at full, uh, full definition. So I see all the in-between frames uh, as well. I'm recording this video at 30 FPS, so you may not see the difference. So let me go at uh, a fifth of the speed. Now you can see that I see all the in-between frames, right? So if I go back to snap and play on frames, now it's like stepped keys again. So this is useful, for example, when you want to uh, check your step keys versus uh, when, you, when you're when you like almost finished with your animation, you want to have a, a higher frame rate and get a better preview of what it's going to be like once in the game engine. And the two other options are uh, you can do it either for the time cursor or the playback. So snap on frames is your cursor snaps on frames, but not your playback. So again, very good if you want to edit and still see a high quality uh, frame rate. And play on frames is, is the opposite. It's going to play on the frames. So it's in, uh, in step keys, plays every key. But you can drag your cursor in between frames and you can also drag your keys in between frames. So if you want to adjust the timing very uh, subtly in between keys, you can do it this way. And when you have play on frames, so you don't have a uh, time snapping, you can press control arrow to actually go uh, frame by frame and snap again. This way you see a bit better what it's gonna look like. So when you key either by pressing S or uh, having auto key on and moving the object around, transforming it, or you can say right click uh, key at time. So you could key at a certain time, 30. Or if in the graph editor, sorry, the F curve editor, you say Alt I to insert a key. Um, you'll have different type of keys depending on the character mode that you're in. So if you're just in uh, selection mode, so just object mode, uh, right now I'm only keying for that particular object and that is a gray key. So even if you have uh, several objects selected in your key, you'll see those gray keys. Okay. Um, if you're in body part and you key, you'll see the uh, either yellow or 
green key. Yellow key means that it's a key for body part uh, that is just a character extension. So character extension are extras that you can add to your rig, for example, for weapons or here for my rootbone controller or if the character had a tail or wings or uh, armor pieces that you want to animate or facial. So yeah, the, there's this, this uh, kind of brownish yellow. So it's just a bit darker than the, the gray keys, right? And here I keyed, um, the, the green key is when I keyed the leg or any body part that's actually part of the uh, basic human IK. So here I key with the, the pelvis, uh, if I select the spine and I transform it and I key, again, I see the green key. And then the red keys are when I key in full body, all right? So it's uh, valid for in the entire body mode. So if I key this arm here in full body, and then I go to the hips and I start moving that key, uh, even though I have the hips selected, since I'm in full body mode, I'm actually moving a full body key, right? But if I'm in um, a body part and I move that key, uh, just for the hips, then I just edit the hips and my arm is still here on the timeline. And when you key, it's worth noting that you only key uh, animatable properties, right? Um, so here, for example, the visibility doesn't get key because it's not animatable. Unless uh, if you are in auto key and you start changing that value, it's actually going to create a key now. Then locked properties won't get keyed at all. Right, you can't transform them, so it won't get keyed. Of course, on the timeline, you can uh, directly select keys without uh, your time slider jumping. So that's a little different from Maya. It's more similar to 3ds Max, I think. You can delete and you can uh, copy them and paste them. So let's say you have a a first block out here. I only have uh, five keys, uh, but I'm playing at 25%. Uh, and let's say I want to start uh, going into block out plus. So I want to increase the definition of my animation. So let's say I want to double uh, the definition. So instead of four frames, I'm going to go to eight frames and I'm going to take all those keys. And here I see the, the number four. So I can double click that and enter eight. So now I have one key every two frame and I have more definition and I can switch to uh, a 50, a, a 0 0.5 play rate instead. And now I can like start um, tweaking my in-betweens by moving some keys around, right? Uh, maybe having that foot come in uh, faster, uh, lock it here while the other foot comes in. Maybe I actually want to make the recover at the end a bit slower. Okay, uh, and maybe I want to rebake that one more time. Once I'm happy with the block out plus, and now let's say I want to actually go one, like, uh, at full speed, so I want to uh, double the, the, the size once again. <clears throat> so, um, if you go, like, if you multiply the number of keys uh, by two every time, you you will be fine. But let's say I actually want it to be uh, 15 instead of 20. Uh, knowing that I have my snap on frames here, if I put that number to 15, look at what happens. Now I have uh, an empty a key here and then uh, I have two keys in a row and I have some other keys here so the keys are not like even anymore and uh, they are, the timing is a bit uh, messed up actually um, so if you multiply by a number that's not uh, double you actually want to uh, say play on frames but basically deactivating the snapping of the timeline so now I can move the keys in between and I can move the slider in between frames. So I'm going to select my 10 frames once again and say 15. 
and now you can see that uh, I have some keys in between frames right so 4.5 7.5 10.5 but at least my timing is still even and I think this is better um, so be careful when you extend uh, or scale your keys right and here are your key controls so this is where you can uh, actually plot your keys so here you see that I messed up the keys and I can uh, plot it all so if if you have several takes in the scene you can plot all of them at once but here I'm just working on one take so I'll leave that box unchecked you could change the play rate I usually leave it at 30 fps and I tend to leave all those default settings as is and now you can see that all my keys are back on the actual actually it's not that they it moved the keys around it just added a key on all those frames and deleted the in-between Key. so now it's all snapped properly here it's showing you which layer you're working on which you have right under so you can create several layers uh, you have the type of keys that you're working on so if I have just one object selected uh, by default it's going to be TR which is uh, translation and rotation but you can work you can isolate and work just on translation rotation scale or all three at the same time and if you select a camera it's actually going to be a specific mode which is just current camera all selected properties so if you work with the F curves and you just want to work on the X and Z translation axis for example plus the Y rotation for some reason you can do this and go to selected properties so here if I start keying I'm actually only keying those properties and the others are not keyed but then if I go back to uh, TR I see those gray keys here this is the option for auto key I rarely use auto key in motion builder I recommend um, just king manually every time with with s for example as a shortcut you can add a zero key so if you move your controller like this uh, you can reset it by pressing the zero key so this is going to go back to the typos here which is how the the character was uh, characterized or if you work with a layer let's say I I moved my arm here on the layer I move my torso and I want to go back to <clears throat> the underlying pose maybe at the beginning I want to stay on on the, on the original pose so here I can add a zero key so I'm back on what was on the base layer and my <clears throat> my offset only comes in a bit later you also have an option to directly make your key flat or discontinuous which is a uh, linear uh, so that's a little bit faster than going into the curve editor and changing that manually so some this is like a shortcut right? but you can also change that by uh, selecting your keys on the timeline and changing the interpolation here with a right click In Motion Builder, you have a very, very important option, which is Move Keys. Uh, it's only available if you are not in Auto Key. So here, uh, my root is at the origin, 0, 0, 0. Uh, let's say I want it to start at 1 meter. And instead of trying to, you know, edit uh, the curves of all my objects by going in, selecting all the objects that are in IK, plus my controller, uh, trying to, you know, move that uh, forward to make it start at a certain distance instead of messing with that I can just select one object so the root select all the keys enter a certain value here so 100 and I moved it 100 and because I'm not in auto key you can see here that it understands that I created a 100 uh, centimeters offset 
and as long as I don't key, I can say move keys. And so it's going to move the entire character and the, for the ent uh, entirety of the keys that I selected by, the, by that same amount. So now I actually offset my entire animation by that amount. So you can actually uh, do it in, in the order that you want. You can take this, move it like that, then select all your keys and say move keys. So this is great when you want to reposition uh, clips, motion capture clips or realign uh, an entire clip to a certain angle.